Secretary, uh, Iran hates the United States and our allies, like uh, Israel and Ukraine, and Iran is eating America's lunch. My question is, the Department of Commerce plays a key role in enforcing U.S. sanctions on Iran. I'm concerned that reports that Iranian drones used in, in Ukraine were determined to have been built with numerous components from American firms. Tehran and its proxies throughout the Middle East are using drones with American-made technology to attack American personnel and our allies. What is the Commerce Department doing to address this illicit exports to Iran? Yeah. Listen, I share your concern, and if you have any ideas of what more we could be doing, I'd like to hear them. I really would. Uh, when the war broke out, we immediately put export controls in place against Russia with 39 other countries, and they were effective. They are effective. Part of the reason we know they're effective is Russia couldn't get our stuff, so they went to Iran and China, and now we see what you're seeing. We've, uh, so we continue to tighten. Like We're constantly adding entities to our list. Um, with respect to Iran, we've put together a task force with the DOJ and DHS uh, to do everything we can to enforce our you know, export controls. I'll be the first to admit that, that there's more work to be done. Um, what, what I would tell you is we're just throwing ev every tool we have, we're throwing it at the problem tightening the actual policy controls. At, some of the money I'm asking for is for export control agents, right? We have to be able to enforce these rules and just stay vigilant on it every single day. I, I have some ideas. I'd love to be, be able to uh, visit yeah. with you and maybe to walk through uh, making some of this come to fruition. But maybe we can follow up with that. Absolutely. Uh, my, great. My next question is, I continue to hear concerns from rural communities. My district is larger than the state of Pennsylvania, and a, lot, a large part of it is in rural communities. And folks in South and West Texas talk about their potential ability to, uh, the, the communication providers in these areas, talk about their potential ability to participate in the agency's BEAD initiative, uh, the lack of it, due to the large size of the areas and that some states will require applicants to serve, as well as the challenges delivering services at a very low mandated rate to certain consumers. What has the agency done about these concerns? Basically, large areas that you're trying to come. Yeah. It's so, very different from an urban area. Um, once again, this is something, you guys are hitting all the topics that keep me up at night. Uh, my job in implementing this $42 billion is to make sure every American has access Everyone. We've never had a task like this before, including rural. We are massively focused on rural. That's what the subsidy's for. So we're working very closely with your governor and with the governor's team, using our maps to figure out who's not covered, and providing subsidies to companies so that they, in fact, cover uh, everyone, including in rural areas. What I can tell you, I, listen, I do feel confident, based on everything I know, that we will get every community, even the most rural. Uh, we're going to have to be agnostic. You know, it may be fiber. We have fiber preference, but it may not be. That may not be affordable. And we're going to make sure that everybody has access that's affordable uh, at the end of our implementation. The way it works is every state has to submit a plan. Sure. Texas sure. is different than Pennsylvania, different than Kentucky. And before we're giving any money to your state, we have to be satisfied right. that everybody will have access. Rural, rural broadband is a very, a very uh, serious concern of mine because I feel as if there's a greater divide happening in this country and it has nothing to do with the color of your skin or how much money you have in your bank account. It has everything to do with where you live. And that is not fair to many people. Now, it is a difficult problem set. It's not an easy wave the wand, throw some money at it, and all of a sudden it goes away. But uh, I'd be very interested in, in how do we incorporate technology maybe into speeding up this process. There's a, just a lot of options there. My last question is um, I want to ask about, we talked about NIST earlier. I want to ask you about the delays uh, at NIST for certifications through the agency's crypto cryptographic modular uh, validation program, CMVP. NIST is sitting on an enormous backlog, some uh, going as far back as 2021, to certain components that go into civilian and Department of Defense systems for data security and encryption. Uh, what is your plan to address this backlog? So let me get you a more detailed answer uh, because, you know, as a former governor, backlogs drive me crazy. 
Uh, I don't, I'll, I gotta get you the specifics, but I promise you I'll get back to you. Excellent, thank you. I appreciate the time, and uh, Chairman, I yield back.